A very good afternoon to you and welcome to the program. This edition of Newsroom Series covering Nigeria's Southeast. I am Bukola Koka. First, the top stories. The Kado State Police Command has officially debunked circulating false information about Emir Al Haji Aminu Ado Bayeru leading Jumat prayers at the Kofar Kudu Central Mosque. According to a statement released today, the police assured residents that Emir Bayeru will instead observe his prayers at the Nasarawa Palace Mosque. The Commissioner of Police, CP Mohammed Husseini Gumel, emphasized that all necessary security arrangements have been made for Al Haji Aminu Bayeru to observe his Jumat prayers in the mosque where he lives at the Nasarawa Palace. The police are also prepared to provide security at the Nasarawa Palace for Emir Mohammedu Sanusi II, who is expected to observe his prayers there. The police public relations officer, Abdullahi Haruna Kiyawa, reiterates these points, urging the public to remain calm and continue their daily activities without concern for their safety. The statement concludes with a firm commitment from the police to provide the necessary security for the safety and peaceful observance of religious activities in the state. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has secured over 3,000 convictions and recovered over 6 billion naira within the one-year administration of President Bola Tinubu. The Secretary of the Commission, Mr. Mohammed Hamajoda, stated this while launching the Zero Tolerance Club at the University of Abuja. Mr. Hamajoda says the commission is deeply worried about the increasing involvement of young people, including students, in cybercrime and warns the students to desist from any form of corruption. The military has confirmed the death of five soldiers, who, uh, and that will be in other stories. <laughs> The military has confirmed the death of five soldiers who are members of Operation Udoka deployed at Obikabia Junction Checkpoint in Obingwa local government area adjoining Aba Metropolis in Abia State who were attacked and killed by IPOB ESN terrorists. A statement signed by the Director, Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, says the troops deployed to enforce peace in the area and protect the citizens were mass attacked by the terrorists. The terrorists in three tented Prado Toyota SUVs and others formed built-up areas surrounding the checkpoint, then sprang a surprise attack on the checkpoint. The statement adds that five civilians lost their lives in the crossfire. As the armed forces mourned the death of these troops, General Buba disclosed that investigations are ongoing over the attack. Meanwhile, the Abia State Governor, Dr. Alex Oti, has held a closed-door meeting with all heads of security agencies and members of the State Security Advisory Council in the state. The meeting took place at his residence in Isialangwa, south local government area of Abia State. They were summoned to discuss on security in the state, the latest being the killings of five soldiers by IPOB ESN terrorists enforcing the sit-at-home directive of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra in Aba on Thursday. And in Enugu State, the, the Emergency Management Agency, in partnership with National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, have commenced flood sensitization training in flood-prone areas to mitigate the impact of lives and livelihood. According to the Acting Executive Secretary, Enugu State Emergency Management Agency, China Samba, the training is expected to build resilience amongst the farming community who are the worst hit every rainy season. Meanwhile, the supporting agency, NEMA, wants farmers to insure their farms and pay expected premium since government is not able to make up for their losses every year. Seated here are farmers from across the villages in Anirin local government area, and they're here for the flood sensitization training organized by the Enugu state government in partnership with the National Emergency Management Agency. <laughs> One after the other, the trainers use local dialects to teach the farmers what must be done ahead of this year's flooding season to reduce the impact on their farmland and livelihood. And the trainees ask questions for clarity. After the training, 
The acting executive secretary, Sema China Samba, shares her optimism about the training. She is hopeful that the active participation will bring about tremendous changes this year. Good enough, it was given in local language, so everybody understood what was said. And you can see by the questions they asked, that shows their commitment to ensure that there is a means of uh, progress in handling or managing emergencies, especially flood incidents in Enugu State and in their community this time around. Meanwhile, NEMA's zonal director reiterates the need for farmers to sign up to insurance policies to protect their investments. We are saying that they should uh, insure their crops because once you insure your crops and there is any misfortune and you pay your premium, the insurance company will intervene and pay you a sufficient amount of money for you to continue your business. And from the traditional ruler of the area is also a message of hope that everything will go according to plan and the farming community will enjoy a bumper harvest. My message to my people is that they should take home this message to the grassroots, put it in practice. But once we put it in practice, actually the aim is achieved. But if we allow it to die down here, the aim and the objectives will not be achieved. Farmers in Aniri and other flood-prone areas in Inugu State count their losses yearly. However, they expect that these efforts will minimize the overall impact, even as they look up to government to find a more lasting solution to the flooding. More on development now. Water is a resource that should be accessible to all, regardless of one's social or economic standing. And in Anambra State, the administration of Professor Chuku Masoludo, in keeping with his manifesto to return the days of pipe on water in the state, is revamping all the moribund water schemes in all three senatorial zones. According to the Commissioner for Water Resources, Mr. Julius Chukwemeka, over 1,400 wash facilities existing in the state that were moribund are presently being revamped by the state government, with over 80% of them now functional. Anambra State comprises urban and semi-urban cities as well as communities, but a significant number of the population do not have access to portable drinking water. That perhaps is changing going by the effort of the government to rehabilitate and reactivate all non-functional water supply projects driven largely by solar energy. For Mr. Governor to solve this problem, we started with uh, dimensioning the problem, having to go into having an inventory of the water facilities to know where we have them, when they were constructed, and of course the reason why the past ones did not work. And uh, from the inventory we had, we actually discovered that um, over 1,400 wash facilities are existing in the state. And um, more than 70% of them, especially those ones serving the public, you know, were not functional. In Anambra Central, Anobia, Nibo, Obeledu, Amokbala, Okra, among other communities, now have functional water schemes. This tank. For the past two months that we entered here, has been filled with water. The tank is containing about two million liters. And these two million liters is being delivered to some part of Oka, Ifite, and Ekoka. As I'm talking to you, people are fetching water. Clean, portable water. We are dealing with generation. Just like you have in the power sector, the water sector faces the same school in the sense we have the sources looking at the boreholes or surface water to generate and be sure we'll have what to store. A similar scenario is what is seen in the South Central District with running water at Mpolovu, Umuchu, Newi, Umunze, Ezera, among others. I think maybe in another one or two months we'll now make check a statistics of how many people still going to hospital in Anambra State that are checking the typhoid where I get plus, plus, plus. You know, I'm, I bet you, you know, from my background, the medical background, you see that it will be dropping. Heading north of the state, Governor Saludo's initiative in reactivating water facilities in Ezia Gulotu, Mpunando, and the big Otuacha water scheme is also a breakthrough intervention for the people. 
this water is very good for us. We use it to wash clothes, to fight, cook and drink everything. We thank the governor for our Anambra State government in terms of this water. Because it help our, our, our people too much. They renovated all the boreholes and convert it to solar solar system or solar energy. Uh, so we are no longer using uh, gas or fuel. The water rehabilitation project ongoing across the state is at the heart of Governor Saludo's measure to ensure the people of the state have access to these basic necessities. And please do give him our regards, warm regards, and uh... as a top brass naval officer of the station. May I, on behalf of Mr. Governor, Professor Chiku Masoludo has been confirmed with the award of Governor of the Year 2023 by the Champions Newspaper Limited in recognition of his leadership style and contribution to the development of Anambra State. The state's Deputy Governor, Mr. Gilbert Ibezim, who received the award on behalf of the Governor, thank the organizers for spotlighting Professor Soludo's strides, whom he described as very focused, thorough and intentional about whatever he does. He says the award would spur the administration of Professor Soludo to do more in enhancing infrastructural development as well as the socio-economic lives of the people of the state. This award goes a long way to show that Organizations are watching us. The state is watching us. The country at large is watching us. And that the world itself is watching us. That there is always a recognition for good work done. When Mr. Governor came in as the governor of the state, he set up a clear strategy for the development of Anambra State, carrying everybody along. And this is one of those recognitions. Just in two years, Mr. Governor has done an average of 10 kilometers of road every month. 240 something kilometers of road completed and about 500 kilometers still ongoing in two years. This is unprecedented anywhere in the country. Okay? And then this road is not just concentrated in an area. We have 21 local governments in Anambra State. The whole of Anambra State has been changed to a construction site. And of course, Champion is an independent organization. Of course, you know the media. If it is not true, they wouldn't come to blow it here. So it is a clear indication that the government of Anambra State presently is in the right direction of development. Where the government wants to make Anambra State a smart mega city. And still to come on the program, this time we'll turn our attention on agriculture as the Ebony State government flags off the 2024 wet farming season. We'll bring you details of this and more. Join us again. Welcome back. The Aboyne State Government has launched the 2024 wet farming and distribution of agricultural imputes to farmers across the state. This is in line with the Renewed Hope Initiative of the President Bola Tinubulet Administration. Bags of rice and fertilizers will also be distributed to farmers across the 13 local government areas free of charge to boost productivity and food sufficiency in the state. The Ebony State Governor in company of the Deputy Governor, lawmakers from the State House of Assembly, other government officials and critical stakeholders are on a project inspection tour within the state. The projects include the reconstruction of Wilberforce Chuba Kadibo International Airport Runway, 
of Bagayad Mofe Road, Evoy State Pipe Production Company, and some housing estates. At the Wilberforce Chuba Kadibu International Airport on Weke, the governor gives details on the cost of the project as he expresses satisfaction with the quality of work on the runway and charges the contractor to keep his promise of completing the project within the next 10 days. To what we've seen, definitely, as far as I'm concerned, I am very much confident that the contractor will complete the work with a very high quality. The contractor is doing exceptionally well because I must praise them. The quality and the quantity of asphalt, the thickness, is beyond what we agreed on earlier because they wanted to regret it to be of international standards. The state governor also commissioned completed road projects. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The governor then visited the Ebony State Pipe industry. Inspected the ongoing housing estate for Ameza and Izo communities at Ezilo in Ishielu local government area and the building of 39 model secondary schools across the state. The Eboin State Government has flagged off the 2024 wet farming season with the distribution of agricultural inputs and palliatives to farmers across the state. The distribution began in Abaklike, the state capital, where Governor Francis Wifu received 30 trucks of farm inputs and fertilizers from the presidential palliative program. Bags of rice and fertilizers are to be distributed to farmers across the 13 local government areas free of charge to boost productivity and food sufficiency in the state. I'm very pleased with what we have achieved in the last 12 months. 80,000 bags of rice that will get 10,000, no, 60,000 to each for the 13 local government areas. 26,000 bags of fertilizer. And Mr. President has given us 30 trucks of farming food and fertilizer. The event is a joint program put together by the state's ministries of agriculture and natural resources and human capital development. 15 of 13 tractors were commissioned for distribution to farmers. Today he flagged up the distribution of uh, people's uh, charter of needs, palliatives in a boring state. And uh, after this flag up, all the local government area chairmen and committees that were formed will now take care of the distribution across the LGAs. The farmers are having here land preparation. So he promised a bonyans, he promised Ebony farmers that uh, before the West season uh, flag off, that is going to buy brand new tractors. And today he flag off the 2024 West season in Ebony State, and he also distributed um, tractors to our farmers. Some of the items distributed are 80,000 bags of rice and 26,000 bags of fertilizers from the federal government. Now let's get more on efforts by the Aboyan state government to turn around the state's fortunes through agriculture and commerce. And joining us to help us with this conversation is the State Commissioner for Commerce and Industry, uh, Oguzo Kano of Fianwali. Mr. Fianwali, good afternoon and welcome to the program. Confirm that you can hear me. Okay, so while we're trying to uh, hear you properly, while, we, while you unmute, uh, perhaps I could just fire the first salvo. Uh, give us a sense of the efforts of the administration's uh, drive towards industrializing 
the state. We see there in that report uh, that the state governor commissioned the pipe industry. Perhaps you could speak more to that. It appears as if we're having uh, difficulty hearing. Perhaps it's a connection audio uh, network problem, rather. Uh, we'll try to s sort out that challenge. In the meantime, the family of late engineer 46, late engineer Levi Opara from Ezediba in Emekuku, you know, where a north local government area of Imo State, who allegedly died in police custody after his arrest, is calling on the federal and state governments the Attorney General of the Federation, as well as the Inspector General of Police, to, as a matter of urgency, come to their aid and expedite action in ensuring that the suspected police officers who were set to be behind the murder of their father are arraigned in court to face the wrath of the law. Addressing journalists in Oware, the Imo State capital, the children of the deceased Levi Opara say it is unfortunate that after three different autopsy reports confirmed that their late father was tortured and starved to death in police detention, the police officers allegedly involved who were earlier arrested have been freed without arraignment in court. The family is therefore demanding justice. Native of Ezedibia, Emekuku, in Oweri North local government area of Imo State. The 46 year old engineer was said to have been arrested by officers of the Imo State Police Command on the order of his wife on Sunday, 15 October 2023, after a little misunderstanding. According to his other family members, efforts to secure his bail within 24 hours of arrest proved abortive. His daughter, Ioma, and others who went to the police station were asked to come back on Wednesday, 18 October 2023. But unfortunately, on getting back, they were told he developed sickness while in custody and after rushing into the police clinic, he died. So on Tuesday, I went back there with my younger sister. I went there with my younger sister. I'm getting there. I was told that I died. Because he said he was in this because he was living in the corner of the church, and not inside the church, outside, living in the corner. They didn't allow him to do this to me. So he went to the office, he spoke with him, he called me, my mother, and my mom said, we should talk about the thing that we don't know what's going on, we should talk about the research with everything. The man said, okay, we should go and come back on Wednesday night. Okay, one day about me, my dad was living in the corner. I wanted to talk to him. He said, You should not touch him. He is in a deep sleep. You should go and come and rest him. While disagreeing with the position of the police over the death of your father, they demanded an autopsy, which according to them was conducted. When the result came, the three doctors were there to verify the result, and it was clearly stated he was murdered and stabbed. There, there was nothing in the stomach. So during the autopsy, there was nothing in the stomach. So he was he was tortured, severely tortured. He had a cut, a very deep cut on his neck, like his jugular vein was tampered with. Even though the police officers allegedly involved were arrested at the time, the family said the officers have been released without any arraignment in court. The case file has been transferred from the Imo State Police Command to the Nigerian Police Domai headquarters in Umaya, that's the capital. Its spokesman Bruno Ianitu says they were released on the recommendation of the Department of Public Prosecution, which has also asked for a fresh autopsy. But still in the process, the matter the case file has gone to DPP. The DPP wrote to the police and the directive was that every disciplinary action should be halted momentarily pending further investigation. The reason being that uh, a fresh autopsy should be conducted in the cops, the basically the final files cops, and the, the officer and the inspector involved should be granted the Levi Opera was buried on the 15th of December 2023, but the police say this will not stop the fresh autopsy. In Gita Channel Television News. 
And that's it on the program. We'll be back again tomorrow, same time, for another edition covering another region of the country. I am Bukola Koka. Bye for now.